So welcome. Uh, this is our From APIs to Serverless Cloud Applications in Minutes webinar. My name is Ken Lane. I'm Chief Evangelist here at Postman. And I'm uh, stoked to have today with me Roderick Rabat from the CTO of Nimbella to help me tell the story of, of why serverless matters and how Postman and Nibella can work together to deploy APIs. So real quick, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, all of you attendees are muted. So we'll have mechanisms for you to get involved. You can ask questions under Q&A. And all of this is gonna be recorded. So if you have to drop off or if you join late, uh, it will be recorded and you can find it on YouTube, our YouTube channel. Once it's done, we try to get those up within usually a couple days, uh, we can get them out. Uh, we're going to, at the end, uh, right, right as we're going into Q&A, we're going to have a brief survey where you have a chance to win an Amazon gift card. But we're also doing a uh, two, two polls during, during this session, this webinar session. Um, we're gonna, right now, we're going to go ahead and ask a few questions. You should see a poll show up on your screen. Uh, and if you can, just answer, uh, you know, share, share to the best of your ability uh, what, what, what your answers are. And I'll give you a few minutes here, and, and then we'll, we'll continue with the webinar. Or give you a few seconds. I'm not going to give it a few minutes. Questions shouldn't be too long, too hard for you. They're not essays, so should go pretty smoothly. But with that said, let me let me start talking about the the agenda that that we have for you today. So the the premise of this webinar is serverless in the future of APIs. So really talking about you know how serverless is impacting the API lifecycle, and 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 then really focusing on how Postman you know as an API lifecycle tool can help you not just consume APIs but actually define, design, develop, and then deploy APIs. And then we're, we're going to talk a little bit about Nimbella, help you kind of set the stage for, for what Nimbella can do when you're using Postman. And then we're actually going to, going to get hands on um, and, and Roderick's going to show you actually how to do this. And then I'm going to come in and, and help show how you can use Postman to keep kind of evolving and moving your, uh, your implementation forward. So there's a bit.ly link here. I'll show this again before we go into the demo. But we actually have a GitHub README that walks through all of the parts and pieces of our demo. So you're more than welcome to follow along. The one of the precursors is that you should have, we're going to assume that you have Postman installed and that you've signed up for Nimbella. Those are the only two things you should, should have done by the time we get to the demo portion of this. And, um, and then we're going we're gonna to actually show you how you can generate an API and deploy an API from a Postman collection using Nimbella and how you can actually deploy that as an API to the cloud. And then we'll kind of polish it and wrap it up, showing you how you can uh, test those APIs, monitor them, and understand a little bit more about how they're working. So that's our agenda today. So let's kind of... let's. Let's think about serverless here. So I don't know how you know how much experience the audience has with serverless, but serverless has been around a couple of years now. Um, you hear it uh, in Amazon. Uh, there's Lambda. You hear it in Google, Azure. All the major cloud providers are doing something serverless. And then there's open source implementations of serverless, like like OpenWhisk, which companies like Nabella are doing interesting things with. But when it comes to deploying an API right now in the Postman world. API deployment is is still a very often bespoke thing. So while, while gateways and API management and code gen are helping automate that, it API deployment is still pretty hands on for developers to actually make happen and bring an API to life. And they have to have backend server experience, database experience, and there's a lot that lot lot that goes into. Uh, how you deploy APIs. Now, Postman, most of our customers know Postman as a HTTP client for making calls to APIs, being able to uh, fully manipulate the request, see the response that comes back and troubleshoot and understand authentication, all the details of consuming an API. I would say the second largest group of Postman users use it to test 
uh, and understand whether and, and verify that an API is working and doing that what it should be doing. And it, moving into the future, as we evolve towards being a more of a, a full API lifecycle provider, we've started adding the ability to mock your APIs, to docu document your APIs, and do the other things that you're going to need to do as not just an API consumer, but as an API provider. So as we move into the future of APIs and start thinking about how we want to enable our developers to not just define and design their API in Postman, but actually deploy it, we're working with partners to help us realize this because we realize there's many different ways that you can deploy your APIs. There's many languages that you can do it in. And there's many existing processes and, and practices out there already in use. So we're not going to reinvent the wheel here. We're going to work with partners who know these spaces and to help us define this. And this is why we're working with Nimbella because when it comes to serverless and the delivery of APIs, they definitely uh, really stood out as one of our partners who get it at a level that we think is going to really change how uh, the API lifecycle and take us into what we see as the future of APIs. So with that said, I'll pass it over to Roderick and Roderick can, can talk a little bit about how Nimbella is going to kind of change this conversation. Thank you, Ken. And I really like that you use the uh, sentence, bring your API to life. Um, and I want our audience to join me in an exercise, a mental exercise. Uh, if you've never heard of serverless, let's try to imagine now all the things you have to do to bring an API to life. Um, maybe not a complicated API, a single endpoint, right? And I think what serverless is about is taking you through that experience at a pace that is unlike any other. Um, so maybe if we go beyond the mental exercise, into something that's actually concrete. I'm gonna ask Jamie to drop a link uh, in the chat to um, our Nimbella Functions Playground. And what I want you to do is use that link and then you're gonna end up on the Nimbella Functions Playground um, and there'll be a button there that you can run to actually uh, run a function that is pre-populated for you in the browser. And then there'll be a publish button that you can press. And if you press the publish button, you'll see an API pop up, an API endpoint. You can take that, and if you have Postman, you can put it in Postman and send a request to it. And you've just brought an API to life uh, that fast. You know, I think if anybody can do this, um, what it really does and what the power of serverless is all about is making the cloud accessible to a lot of developers. And the power of the cloud is immense. So imagine now that your API endpoints are secured for you by the cloud provider. Uh, they scale as, uh, as they need to, whether you have one user or hundreds of users or thousands of users or millions of users. Right? The idea is as an API creator, as a designer, as an implementer, should you have to worry about all of the details that go into bringing an API to life? And serverless, the serverless promise is that no, you should not have to worry about that. Make it somebody else's burden. Because what we as developers are really good at is creating value, uh, imagining new applications, imagining new APIs, and bringing them to life. And that's what we should really be focused on. So serverless is, uh, that's the serverless promise. And an Umbella serverless cloud is a way of delivering that promise to end users with an awesome developer experience. This is our mission. This is what we're trying to do. And we do it in a three-pronged approach. One is integrating tooling, uh, but doing it in a way that isn't disruptive to end users. You know, as developers, we're finicky about the IDEs we use, um, the operating system we use. Um, we're, uh, we use lots of different tools, Postman versus Curl versus some other uh, mechanisms for, um, uh, for Git versus you know, GitHub versus GitLab. There's a lot of different things that we put together to actually build applications. And we wanna integrate and be part of that workflow in a, in a very important way, but we're not really disrupting that entire experience. And what I'm gonna show you in the demos later is how I quickly flow from my visual, uh, my IDE, I'm gonna use VS Code, uh, to the browser, and I'm gonna be able to do similar kinds of commands for building and bringing my API to life. Um, but what is it about APIs that's interesting? I think it's because they're central to applications in general. And when you start going from API to application, more things become important. And that's, hey, I need to be able to store data somewhere. Uh, I need to be able to deploy a front end for my API to interact with it. 
I need to be able to compose APIs together to create um, you know, which are workflows and which are orchestration of APIs. So we've put that together and there's a way within the Nabella cloud to essentially do all of that with the same seamless experience that deploying an API from the playground was. And the last aspect of this is making it both open source, so leveraging open source technology um, and being able to essentially span all the cloud providers in a way that essentially taps the best power of every cloud provider so that you can deliver the best experience to end users. I think we will eventually live in a world where developers simply don't care what cloud they're running on for a large extent. And being able to take advantage of any cloud provider that's out there requires that you have uniform developer experience that allows you to essentially use the core capabilities and core competencies of each cloud provider. And so we've done that with Nimbella. We have uh, the Nimbella cloud that runs on Google Cloud. We can deploy it on Amazon. We can deploy it on Microsoft Azure. And we can even deploy it in private clouds, uh, including your own laptop. So for development, if you want the Nimbella stack locally so that you can develop more rapidly or because you just must be able to look at what's happening under the covers, that's all possible. So the Nimbella serverless cloud, at the end of the day, is about delivering an awesome developer experience for building cloud applications in a way that's fast, that's agile by construction, and powerful because it allows you to essentially create more things faster. Um, Ken, you want to take over? Sure. So thank you for that. It definitely, for me, the, the abstracting way, the complexities as that, that I face as a developer, because I've spent uh, hundreds of hours learning uh, serverless Lambda on, on AWS uh, and trying to understand the nuance across these cloud three cloud platforms. So that abstracting away of, of all that learning and helping me just onboard is pretty, pretty key in what I'm doing. But for me, because, because we're centering this around Postman and, and designing and building APIs in Postman, I'm pretty impressed at how you guys were able to seamlessly kind of weave this together with kind of my existing reality as a developer, because uh, you know, we've got 12 million developers now. The reality for many of us is we live here in our Postman. This is our interface for being able to troubleshoot, understand what's going on and make sense of the world. And similar to how you're going to show this in, uh, in Visual Studio, we'll walk us through, is I have my IDE open. I live in my IDE and I live in my Postman. And that's pretty much reflects my world as a developer. So I really don't want to have to always go to a new interface to be able to do things and get things done. And I really think that's the power of today's, you know, what we're, what Roderick's going to show you with the, uh, the plugin, just Nimbella as a platform, but the plugin that they've, they've made in the command line uh, approach to what they're doing. But it really seamlessly ties together with, with what you're already doing in Postman. And I'm not going to spoil it and show, show too much of, of, how, of what he's doing, but that seamless interaction is key for me, abstracting away the complexities of the cloud and that seamless interaction with my existing world. Because APIs, my API world is centered right here in Postman. I don't want to have to go too far. And so talk to, to share a little bit about how you kind of made that happen, Roderick, as far as uh, making Nimbella and Postman just kind of work in concert to, to take, you know, bring these APIs to life in the cloud. Right, and I think you're, you're you know, the kind of ideal developer that we had in mind for this. You know, you live in, uh, in a world where it's your IDE and it's Postman, and that's the bulk of your workflow. And we just had to integrate with that. And so our approach was to basically say, okay, we're about deploying APIs. We're about building and deploying these APIs, making them richer, making them stateful, et cetera. But at the end of the day, uh, the developers are creating APIs. Where do they test them? Um, they should test them from Postman. And where do you start sort of putting your API together? You know, is it uh, what kind of verbs you want to use? What's the schema? What are the examples? You know, the germination of the idea typically starts in Postman. And so what we built was a way for you to take your Postman collection or open API specification and generate from it a project, a cloud project uh, that you can deploy to the serverless cloud, to the Nabella serverless cloud. And you can do it in a way that then also generates or allows you to import uh, that project back into Postman so you can test every API endpoint that you've created. This tool that we've built, uh, part of the Nabella command line tool, uh, is a plugin. Uh, it uses a well-known um, open source project for building CLIs, Oakleaf. Uh, and we've open sourced the plugin itself. So Jamie will be sharing a link later uh, to our GitHub repository. 
So if what you like here um, is exciting to you, and if you want to improve it, uh, we welcome contributions. Um, and you know, I think for me that it's open source for developer tools is really important uh, because I think there's a lot about Postman and how people use it. When you're talking about millions of users who use Postman, that you're just not going to capture uh, by yourself. So having a community that we can build around this is really important. This is part of why we're doing this webinar here. And when you create, um, before, I guess we can go on to the next slide. And I think what I'm going to show you and sort of setting up a little bit of stage is you start with Postman, you create your Nambella project, uh, you deploy it to Nambella Cloud, and then you can test it. And now it's about the fluidity of being able to iterate and develop, bring your API to life, um, and be able to sort of incrementally refine your API as you go. And in fact, Ken and I went through this when we were sort of coming up with what example are we going to do and how are we going to bring this point forward? You know, he started with an API, he designed it on his own. Uh, he said, hey, look, Roderick, I put this on README. You can import this into Postman. I said, great, uh, let me take a look at it. Uh, and then when I started doing it, I was like, huh, wait, I can do a little bit more here in terms of the functions playground and being able to introduce um, various state aspects to make it real. And as I was going through and doing this, I was discovering, hey, wait, we could have done this API a little bit differently. Uh, so I'm going to throw it back to Ken to, to talk about it and then set the stage for the rest of the demo here. Yeah, so, so Roderick and I are both developers, so we need, we're going to need to get hands on with this. There's only so much time we're going to be able to spend in, in the deck. So there's a bit.ly link that will get you to the GitHub repo. Um, all that's going to load is basically uh, this readme here which again, the base requirements, we, we require you to have uh, Postman and Nabella, as I me mentioned, but then Roderick's gonna actually walk you through how to do this. And it's pretty, pretty basic. And you can, within a couple of command, uh, commands at the command line, you can have an API. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to you to Roderick to kind of let me stop sharing so that you can share and take it away. All right, so I think I should be sharing. If my screen isn't showing through, somebody holler at me. Um, I, I would I would expand into full screen. I can see a little um, of your desktop behind and I'll probably give everyone. There you go. All right. You can hide All you. Also. Okay, great. And uh, you know, the first thing I have here is the actual playground that I was alluding to before. And if you went through the mental exercise of what does it take to bring an API to life, what did you come up with? Uh, you know, maybe if this is JavaScript, you might use Node and Express. Um, you have to run your server somewhere. Where are you going to do that? And the power of serverless is basically I can click publish. I've got a URL endpoint here, which I've already um, copied. Nope, oh, I didn't copy. Let me copy it again. Um, pasting into Postman right here. And I'm going to click send to it. And there you go. It said hello stranger, which is what my code says. And my function accepts a name. So I'm passing it as a query parameter, and it should say hello Postman, or not. Okay, so something broke. Interesting. All right, I'm not gonna debug that, but it should have worked. Uh, sometimes this error is misleading, like the function doesn't exist, but. Hazards of live coding. Yeah. I, uh, oh, I think it might be the agent. Click, go back to your postman there. So do you have the agent running? Because you're on the web. I don't, I'm only in the browser. Yeah. So let me try this one more time. Okay, it worked this time. I don't know what I did wrong. Uh, I just unpublished and republished the API. Uh, but essentially you've taken a snippet of code and now it's an API endpoint that I can run from Postman. And now I can go on and iterate and define and refine my application. Um, you can do interesting things in the playground. So I think we have a more interesting sample here like resize an image. Um, so this is a bunch of code that will take a um, image of a cat, which is fairly large. Um, let me just pop it open in the browser, there it is. And I'm going to create a serverless function which will resize it. So I don't know if this console is in the way, but there's a resized uh, image. So again, you can take this, it's your API endpoint and run it from Postman. Now let's get back to um, you know, this example that Kim uh, created. Um, so if you follow along, and I, I suggest that you do because you'll be able to actually do this at the speed that I'm going. Um, 
you know, if you sign up for an Umbella account, it takes about 60 seconds before you have a fully provisioned account ready to go and create cloud applications. And um, you can install, uh, and you can just download the CLI and run NIM login, and it'll take you through the whole process of um, signing up and logging in, configuring your CLI if you need to. In fact, for some of what I'm going to do, you can in fact run some of these commands directly from what we call the Nambella workbench. So the playground that I was running in before was actually uh, part of uh, the workbench and it's just a terminal essentially in your browser. And it's a convenient way of sometimes of, I'm working in the browser, I don't want to switch context, change windows, et cetera. You can run a lot of Nambella commands directly from your workbench. I'm actually gonna do deploys of my API directly from GitHub from my workbench a little bit later on. So if you create an account, you install the Postman plugin. It's from GitHub, but the code lives on GitHub and uh, it's open source. Uh, if you're into GitHub stargazing, we'd, we'd appreciate some GitHub stars, of course. Um, and then you'll need a Postman key. So we need your Postman API key because we are going to um, uh, be able to push, operate, well, uh, it's optional, of course, uh, but if you want sort of a seamless experience to sort of interact between Postman and Nambella, you can tie in with your Postman API key, and that allows us to fetch um, collections directly from your Postman workspace. And so if you're working with others who are sharing your workspace and building APIs that way, then you can continue doing that. And then a single API key allows us to essentially from the Nambella CLI, like I'm doing here, uh, pull a particular collection by name, and then be able to generate a project for it in any number of languages that we support. So here I'm highlighting that uh, I'm using JavaScript or Node.js, uh, but we support a number of languages. And the power I think here of serverless is you can build APIs in languages that are convenient for you and what you're trying to accomplish. So if Python, Python is what you need to do, maybe you're doing something with AI ML or you're moving over some Flask API code, then you can generate Python code, PHP, uh, maybe you're coming from a LAMP stack, uh, Swift, if you're doing iOS mobile development, Java, um, Ruby, uh, there's a number of languages that, you, that we support and that you can run. In fact, a single project doesn't even need to be all in a single language. You can implement different API endpoints in different languages if it makes sense for you to do that. And the power of serverless is that every API endpoint can essentially run in the sandbox environment. Moreover, our critical operation, sort of the, um, you know, the single most important operation in the Nabella cloud and the Nabella CLI is this project deploy. This is the idea that you're trying to deploy a cloud application. It's not just a single function or a single API endpoint, but it's a collection of them. And it's not just the APIs, but it's services that might need to go with those APIs, like a database or a bucket for storing web assets that you want to serve for a front end. Um, so there's a number of components and services that have to come together to build and deliver a cloud application. And what we've done with Project Deploy is to allow individual developers to essentially deploy the same project to their own dedicated space in the cloud, independent of each other. Uh, but when they need to share, they can share and collaborate for sure. Uh, for example, you might be co-developing and eventually you wanna to go to a staging environment before you go to a production environment. But every one of these steps here uh, that we'll go through essentially allows somebody who's following along to deploy these collections to their own namespace, all on their own, completely independent of what I'm doing. And it's a reproducible process. So the first thing that Ken did is he created a number of APIs. So he did products, uh, persons, logs, and then there's some instructions about testing that he'll cover a little bit later on. And there's this run and postman button. So if you click in this run and postman button, I'm going to use the web browser because I think it's quite convenient. I'm really glad that this was finally available. And I'm importing the products collection into my Postman space. Maybe I don't want two of them available. And so here it is. Oh, I already had done it before, it doesn't matter. And so here's the collection. It, might, it has uh, what you would expect, the ability to an API to get a product by ID, um, list all products, update a product, um, specific to an ID, delete, again, accepts an ID, and then to add a product. So this is a post that uh, you know, takes some parameters and there are some examples in here. Um, there we go to the, um, where's the body? So it takes some parameters, generates the result, and you know, in this case, the status 
tells you success, you've, congratulations, you've added a product. So this is the conception of the idea. Now let's start bringing it to life. And the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, generate an umbrella project from this. Oops. This is, this is the project CLI. All right. So I'm going to just copy this line. I'm gonna to go to my terminal. All right, I'm gonna remove everything that's here. And I'm saying, Nimbella, create a project for me. Uh, this is a Postman project, and I'm using dash I for the uh, collection name products, and I'm gonna generate a JavaScript project. And so when I do, uh, I've pre-configured this with my Postman API key, so it's not gonna prompt me for it, or I thought I did. Um, so then let me just go generate a new one. That's why we documented all the steps. So that link will take you directly into your Postman account to your right. user and you can grab a key from there. Um, All right, so this is generating a number of projects, uh, a number of API endpoints. So you'll see it generated code for get product, for get products, update, delete, et cetera. And then there's some other product, uh, some other project ancillary material we generated that we will use later. You'll notice I skipped syncing up and updating the collection in Postman uh, so that um, the, what this would have done is essentially pushed all the API endpoints for this project back into Postman. And that would allow me to then uh, see updated URLs for each collection. I'm gonna do it slightly differently here, which is as we go along, uh, because I wanted to show you different things, I'm going to uh, do an import instead. So let's, um, Kill this and uh, let me go to my VS Code Studio. And so this is the a checkout of the repository we were talking about. And if I do get checkout of step zero, which is what I just did here, you'll see this is gonna populate um, my product, my project with all the code that was auto-generated. Let's take a look at one. Let's take a look at, um, at a product. So add a product receives parameter. Um, and is going to return status success. Where did we get this stuff from? We got it from the examples that Ken gave us. So let's look at get product. If I was to run get product in the Postman UI, um, it's gonna return a result, which is all of these values here. And these are directly derived from what Postman has for your collection. So when I run get product, right? Uh, sorry, I didn't configure this. I wanted to look at the example. There's an example here, which is here's a response that I expect my API to give. And so we take these examples and we generate code from them. And so when I deploy this code, which I'm going to do, oops, I'm going to see some functions created and you'll see created one, two, three, four, five functions. And these are for each of the API endpoints that we created. I'm gonna to go to Postman and I'm gonna import them. Folder. This path is correct. And you'll notice that these API endpoints have changed. Now these are actually live API endpoints that I could run. And if I run them, uh, they will return results, which are the results that we saw in the examples. So we've already essentially thought of, you can think of this as live mocking of your API endpoints. And we've done this for every API example that was here and every API endpoint. So when I say list all the products, it gives me the pre-populated examples that we wanted. So how do we make this more real? Um, so as I went through this, uh, I thought, okay, first I need to add a real product. So I started working with the update function. So let's get, take a look at the update function. And that's add. So you'll notice here, it's not really doing anything. It's just returning status success. So uh, I've pre-written the code for add product. So I'm checking out that branch. And you'll see it changes a little bit of the code here. So what happened? Um, first, I'm importing the Numbella uh, SDK, which allows me to have or access a database. 
because when I add a product, I want to add it to a database. And I'm using a key value database, uh, it's very simple here, and adequate, where I have a string that will associate with the ID product, and then I'm going to store the product as the value. And so this is what's happening here. And if you're following along and you actually try to run the command that's in the readme, this will work uh, on your Novella account, even though you've provided, uh, you've done nothing to provision resources for compute or for storage. They're just there for you. Um, you're not worrying about, you know, is this database strictly for my account? Uh, and is it world readable or not? We've already taken care of how to secure it and how to lock it down, how to back it up. Uh, every function that runs in your namespace can access this data store and it's not accessible from the outside world. Uh, it's backed up for you and it will scale up and down as we need to. Uh, I've taken some parameters from the example that uh, can create it. So I'm taking the product category, the brand, the color, the image. There's more that can have in there, but I didn't use all of it. You'll see why a little bit later. Um, storing it in a database, and if that operation is successful, I'm returning to a one as can had intended, status success, and so on. So let's deploy this project. And I'm only gonna deploy incrementally here because um, only one API changed. So it's gonna deploy only one action, or only one serverless function at product. The others are unchanged, so they're left alone. Now, if I go back to Postman and let's go to the add product, we click send, right? It says success. And what's different here is that we actually did something. Whereas before we were just returning some, uh, some inline code, now we've stored something in, in a database. So what happened? So I'm switching to my workbench and I'm going to do nim activation list. So this is an Embella command that you can run from your command line, but you can also run it in your browser. So you don't have to learn different commands or use different modalities if you don't want to. Uh, the same things that, you, that work on your machine work in the cloud. And so you'll notice uh, I have a new activation of the add product. And if I click on it, I see the result that was returned by my API. So it returned status success and uh, nothing else. Now, here's, as I was doing this, I thought, hmm, Ken, we should return the ID that we're adding for this product. So I actually know, hey, you know, I got a new ID added as opposed to, uh, uh, because all, all of the other APIs for delete, for update, et cetera, we need the ID. So I thought, hey, let's do that. Um, I'm good. So this is a small change. I don't need to switch to VS code to do it. Uh, I'm gonna do it directly from the workbench. So let's return the ID, which is product.id and deploy. So, Going back to Postman, I expect the API response to now change. And there, now I have an ID. So every time I add a product, I get a new ID. Great, so I'm adding more products. I hope that makes sense. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, no, it's making sense. And I think it's showing the different modes of, you know, you can be in your ID here, you can be at the command line, and you can go to the web to be able to do this. But it really shows just how how quick and easy it is to actually make the changes you wanna see. Right. So the, the next one I did was, okay, I've just added a bunch of stuff. What's in my database? Um, so I replaced the implementation of get products. Um, so get products is small enough. I could do it live, um, but I don't wanna push my luck too much. So I'm going to check out the branch step two. And step two replaces essentially all of that inline boilerplate JavaScript, which was returning an array by saying, uh, query the database that I'm using uh, for this prefix. And now, you know, if you were wondering why was there a slash before, it's because I needed to sort of name the keys in a particular way that allows me to retrieve them all fairly quickly. And so I use slash for that. Uh, and so I'm getting every key that starts with a slash. I'm assuming that's one of our products here. And then I'm returning all of those results um, as, as a result. So to show you that this is in fact going to be a change, uh, always trust but verify. So this is the boilerplate result. I haven't deployed yet, right? So get products is returning to me the boilerplate example that was in there before. And now when I do, actually, let me show you the deploy straight from GitHub. Um, I think this is mind-boggling, mind-boggling cool. All right. Um, 
So nim project deploy, I specified the GitHub repo, uh, the directory that I want to deploy from, and even the branch. I'm going to go into my workbench, and I'm going to say, go ahead, deploy it. Um, so the code is fetched from GitHub, it's deployed, and soon we will actually have a builder service that automatically builds the project um, if you're doing things that require builds, like if you're doing Go and Swift and other languages. So I've deployed, and now if I run this, I expect a different result for this API. And it's there. Um, so notice I was keeping the union name, the category and stuff, so every ad was the same, and the ID uh, is different for each one of these. So I've already added products, now I can list products, my API is coming to life, my application is coming to life. I did a third step, which was, okay, get a single product. Um, works the same way, so let's, uh, let's do that. All right, so this is changing the implementation of get product. And very similar to the other function, uh, but I had to deal with an error condition. So uh, get the product ID. If the product is defined, then great, we return it. Otherwise, we return a 404. So my API didn't have this before, and right? It's part of the iterative process. And I think as you're building APIs and bringing applications to life, these are the kinds of things that sometimes you just discover and you just need to be able to tweak. So being able to sort of go back and forth, I think is incredibly powerful, and I hope you agree. Um, and then there's some error conditions that you might need to handle. You know, maybe the database becomes unreachable. Um, code throws an error for some reason. Uh, I didn't sanitize any of my input, so maybe somebody figured out how to attack my code. Right. So you have to deal with certain errors. So in that case, I would return, oops, sorry, I need to figure this out. Now, obviously, I should be writing tests for all this, right, Ken? But you're going to show me that later. So I'm yep. going to skip it for now. All right. Let's see. So I, uh, what I should have probably done is run this in project um, watch mode. So I could have said nim project watch. Um, the products directory. And so if I was to execute this, then even as I'm ch making changes or switching branches, it would be deploying the project for me, uh, but it generates a lot of uh, output, which I didn't want to be distracted by. So I didn't run it here. But in any case, so now I can just do project deploy and um, in the products directory. And so I can be thoughtful about when I want to push changes or not, or just automatically sync them and keep them going there. Right, exactly. And so get product returns the single product. And so this is why I needed to, to do the ID. Um, right, so when I add a product, it gives me an ID, which now I can copy and go to get product. And this takes a path parameter, which is already filled in conveniently and nicely for me by Postman. I say, here's the product ID that I want. And now it should return the shorter response, which we're generating. Right? So it's, it's easy to tell, hey, this is my code versus the example code, so quite convenient. All right, and now the last thing that I did was um, add a simple web UI. Right? This is all great, but I'm building a re e-retail store, I should have a web UI. Um, so I deployed step four web UI, and again, I deployed from GitHub, and I got a URL here uh, that I'm gonna show you, the same functions before. But what did I just do? Let's take a look at what's in this branch. Before I check it out, recall that when the project was created, there were some other files that I didn't cover. One of them was this index.html file. This is a boilerplate uh, file that if you just go to, it will just show you an Embella logo and nothing else. And this is here, and there's nothing else in this code. When I check out step four, you'll notice I filled in the script section. Um, and what did I do? I fetched all the products. So here it is, I fetch all the products from my API endpoint uh, that I just brought to life. Um, it's a JSON response. And then for each product in the response, I'm gonna create an HTML entry so that I can show the results on the web page. Uh, so I'm dynamically injecting HTML in here. You know, you, you, if you're doing this and you're creating a nice web page, you might use React or some other front end framework. This is simple enough that I can do in plain uh, JavaScript and uh, HTML. So we've deployed this, it's live, and actually I'm gonna do it again for convenience of opening the browser. All 
So I should deploy here no new functions, but only my web endpoint. All right, so no functions changed, only this change. And so I can click this, open in my browser. And there, it uh, showed me three items that I added. Um, the image that, so e each of these is supposed to be an image. I took a certain fields, you know, so it's red union fashion. Um, and I'm, I'm rendering them here. I noticed that the price wasn't part of the um, body that we're sending, right? So you're adding a product, there's no price. So we should probably add a price. The other thing is this image is an example image. And so let me get rid of this and add a new product. Let me refresh here. Hopefully this is gonna work. All right, so now I have four products. And what I did in, in this code is uh, I said, where did I do that? Here, if the image is not defined, then put a default image in there. Um, so how am I gonna get this default image into my browser? Uh, so I went online, I Googled for um, jeans, and I found an image, and I just wanna put it in my web bucket. The image is on my desktop. It's called default.png. So I'm taking an image, uploading it to my project, and now if I refresh, boom, now I've got a jeans image. And I'm done. Uh, basically, I've created a simple front end that has images that I can render. I can upload them either as part of a project deploy, or if I miss something, I can upload it to my bucket and have it serve directly from the web browser. Um, let me just show you that when I refresh this in the network tab. So we're making the API call here to get products. Uh, this is calling my API endpoint. I didn't have to do any of that, right? So let's take a look at break this down. There's a HTTPS domain name that's specific to me. If you were following along, then you would have your own. Um, I didn't have to worry about the security of, of the certificate for this. Um, there's no course issues between my front end and my API endpoints. So there's sensible settings in there. You can control and change any of those, but to just get started, all of sort of the gatekeepers are out of the way. I'm changing my code as you saw in real time and I'm reflecting that in my entire application. And I can always go back to Postman and test my API and say, is this working, is this not? And then modify my API as I go. So I could show you one more thing, which is, uh, you know, I have two products here. One, which is my product specification and sort of the idea that Ken started with. And then as I was developing, I wanted to change some things. So now what I might want to do is say, okay, um, I've gotten to the point where I understand my API. I'm, I'm happy with it. It's better. So when I do a project create where somebody else takes the project creation and then they, they have live endpoints for their API, they can provide the added flag, which is to update the Postman collection directly. And so rather than have two products, one uh, has essentially the base URL and one has the real URL for the endpoint, then it would essentially be working in one space on one product uh, that is live and um, uh, sort of you're iterating and sharing uh, with others you know, on just one thing. So that's the extent of what I really wanted to show you is the ability to just take the, the idea of an API, uh, bring it to life. Uh, and it's not just about APIs. It's not just about how do I implement that single function. It's about the database. Hey, I need to store something. Where do I store it? So imagine if you had a world where you didn't have to worry about that. And then, hey, I want to deploy this and it has a web front end. Um, you know, that content for the web front end is being served from a CDN, it's globally accessible. You didn't have to worry about the domain name, the certificate, all of that is done for you. And now you've got a complete application and that's what a Nobella project is about and the power of, of Nobella project deploy. I'm gonna kick it over to you, Ken. Yeah, so I, I've created a couple collections that that do help me deploy APIs from Postman like this without Nabella. I did one for uh, AWS Lambda and it was 30 steps to deploy the database, deploy the, the, the serverless scripts. It was pretty lengthy and pretty verbose to do. So what you just showed um, definitely cuts a lot of that away. But then it, as you showed it, go, you go that next step of showing that, that, that you can do the UI portion of it and for every API, I think to have a more tangible uh, UI like that by default, I think that immediately makes it much more inclusive to, to other team members who maybe aren't developers, who maybe can't make that API call and see that. So I think that's a, 
a really big benefit that helps. Um, I'm going to go back to my screen share here. And I'm going to just add on a little piece from the from the repo. Um, I've been following along doing my own implementation. But if you scroll down to the finishing touches section, I kind of walk through how you can you can test this API. And so I, I have my own products collection in my little demo space. I've been following along. I have my requests. I have my own server in my namespace set up and I can make calls to it and actually see the responses. Um, now, if Roderick wanted to share his namespace, I could be working from that. It depends on, on what our team workflow is. But I just wanted to show you real quick how each request has the ability to add test scripts so that I can start testing this API. And so back here on, on the, the readme for this, you can grab this basic snippet here if my cursor will work, there it is. And go back to my Postman and I can paste this in. And I'm looking, what I'm doing here is when this response comes in, I'm gonna look for a, a 200 status code, despite what my comment says. I'm looking for a, a 200 status code here. And what happened? What didn't work? So it's your turn now. <laughs> yeah, it's my turn to be doing the live coding here, huh? So let me see. That's not right. And this is normally, so it's pulling it, fail 200 status code. Boy, I don't know what I'm, oh, I got a 201. I, it, I was following my comment. All right, so there we go. That's a good example. So now I should be able to close my console. Um, Rather than looking at the body of the results, let me get my screen up a little bit here. Rather than looking at the body, I'm looking at the test results here, which show the results of my test scripts and I've passed. This is a 200 status code. Now, if I wanted to go further, there's, um, there's some other examples here. You can go down and I wanna check to make sure that this is, this is actually valid JSON. And I, didn't, I see that I didn't fully clean up this script. Just paste this. So you can do multiple tests here. I'm gonna clean this up because I don't want, this is some extra reporting that I had from my, de my last demo. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding a second test and I'm gonna check to see if this is valid JSON and when it returns, because I could still get a 200 status code and it, maybe it's not re returning actually valid JSON. So I'm gonna actually check for that and do a separate test. And I've passed both of those tests. Now, if you want to go further than that, I recommend you clicking on your little sidebar here. There's quite a few little snippets you can, you can experiment and find different ways that you can start uh, applying different tests. Now, I noticed there was a question in the Q&A about, hey, would you want to do this before you actually deploy your API? And yes, you, you, you probably would want to do that. And I could have uh, an API first process. Um, I actually, uh, have one here in another workspace um, for, for, for my products API and I'm in the wrong workspace. But I have one that I could just then change out the URL to my Nimbella project and all my tests should just work out of, out of the gate. So when I have, so I can either do my testing after I've deployed to Nimbella or if I'm part of an API first process, I could be designing, defining, mocking these collections, have my tests ready to go and then Nimbella can move us from actual mock to a more robust development environment. And, and then I can actually apply those same tests to test out my contract. So that really gives you the ability to, to decide when, when, when it is you test. How do you apply these tests? Do you do it as part of that first design process? Do you do it once you're actually developing that API? Um, it's up to you to choose based upon what works for you. But here are some examples that you can apply as part of that. And then once you have that collection, you can actually monitor that. You can then run this collection here. So I can choose to run this as a runner here manually. Um, if I want to uh, choose my products collection, I can run all of those requests and, and I'll see the response for it. And I can run that in my command line. I can run that as part of any uh, Jenkins or other CI CD pipeline using Newman, our open source runner. But I can also run this as a monitor. So I can run this collection, 
choose which environment. If I've got different uh, Nibella environments set up, I could have one or many. And then I can choose what schedule I want to run and what regions I want to run that from. Um, and this allows me to then test that API, run it on a schedule, so it'll actually do it uh, every night, every hour, to make sure that my API hasn't changed as part of the development process. And so hopefully that gives you a little, little insight into how you can deploy a collection from Postman as an API using Nimbella. Um, we've provided you with these three collections, but you can do this with any Postman collection that you have. We just wanted to provide some that were easy, had some examples and could show you how to do this. But I recommend testing it out with any other um, collections that you have. And with that said, let's go back to the deck here and we can kind of wrap some of this up. Um, before we, we kind of close up and head to Q&A, I know we have another uh, uh, a poll we'd like to do. Uh, just a couple of simple questions. Um, we, we really want to kind of assess what's your, uh, what's your understanding of serverless? How, you know, where are you at in, in, in your serverless journey, I would say, as far as putting it to use, is your organization already using it? And then I think another really key aspect of what we're trying to understand is, like, what's your view of multi-cloud? Are you just operating in one cloud? Are you currently operating in multiple? Do you not really care? I would say uh, that multi-cloud vision for me is one of the, the most powerful aspects of, of Nimbella is abstracting away the complexities of serverless for each of the clouds and the differences, and then helping you actually achieve that vision of multi-cloud scalability, which is the promise you've been hearing for a long time, but I really actually haven't seen that happen. So take the poll, just a couple of quick questions. Um, hopefully you can um, just kind of give us a little bit more insight into what you're doing, but hopefully that helps you show, you know, the potential of the Postman platform when it comes to not just being an API client, gives you a little insight into how you can um, uh, design and, and develop APIs as collections or as open API. It's up to you. You can choose which way you want to uh, define your APIs, which format. And then Nimbella can take those, those collections and then or open API because everything Roderick just showed you with the uh, with the Postman collection, you can do with the open API definition as well. So it's up to you and how you use Postman, um, keeping it kind of being that Swiss Army knife that allows you to do it your way, how you want, um, and and the different parts. But taking that Postman collection or that open API definition and then helping you deal with all of the data store, all the compute all of the provisioning, everything you're going to need, and then helps you uh, kind of realize that in a, in a multi-cloud way. I think if I can add one, yeah. one thing, um, Ken, is uh, I, I don't know the results of the survey, but if serverless is new to you, I think you know, this should encourage you to go and take a look and see what this is all about, whether you do it with Nimbella or some other cloud provider. Oh, great. We do get to see some of the results. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, I think this is great because you know, the power of serverless is in making the cloud accessible to more and more developers. And the cloud is a supercomputer. I mean, the things you can do in the cloud today are just amazing. So just imagine having all that power with the ease and convenience of developing without having to worry about, hey, I'm programming against a large distributed system here. How do I do it? So this is the power of serverless. And in my view, and I get to use my favorite catchphrase, serverless is inevitable. Uh, it has so many interesting and desirable properties that as developers we want, uh, I think as uh, in terms of opening accessibility to the cloud, we want. And so in my view, this is what makes serverless accessible, uh, inevitable. Uh, and, you know, you would just be ahead of the curve. Uh, we're still early in the serverless days. I think, you know, it's, it's had exponential growth since Amazon started essentially this movement. And when they started, they even call it serverless. Um, and, but it has sort of grown and we're within, you know, five or six years in at this point. But the exponential growth over six years is, is evident. It's there in terms of people adopting and using it. So if you're new to it, great. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to learn. And if you've already uh, gotten a taste of it, I hope you appreciate sort of the power of it and you help in evangelizing it. Yeah, I think, I think the poll is interesting. It shows that, that people are doing it. I think they're doing it. I think 
it's definitely not go, any, going anywhere. Serverless has is, is been growing. I would say whether it's about changing technical, at, it's, it's more the technical aspects of doing serverless versus the business. There are some, some business and cost savings. And I think you, you would agree vendor lock-in is one of the big ones that if you can achieve uh, serverless at a, at a multi-cloud level, that really helps abstract away uh, some of the, the business lock-in and business right. challenges you would face. So, right. And that's why you'll see on sort of the Nubella slide at the bottom, right, multi-cloud, you know, the ability to deploy essentially Nubella in any cloud of your choice, uh, or if you don't care, then we'll take care of that for you. So I think it's important. Plus, it's uh, backed by a lot of open source, seasoned open source and proven open source projects that scale. Um, I think, you know, in the end, serverless is transformative. You know, if you're using it in a large organization, what you see is you end up with new architectures, but you can do it gently. You can migrate slowly. So there's, gen there's that gentle migration step. It's certainly mature that you can do uh, very powerful things. And there's a number of case studies from companies you would recognize, like Pepsi, Capital One, et cetera, uh, that are sort of talking about how they're achieving efficiency because of the serverless mindset. Well, for us, it's definitely, um, for me, it represents the future of, of API deployment. It's how we're going to uh, make API deployment much, much easier for developers and, and much more agile and cost effective. So, well, thank you, Roderick. Um, uh, let's kind of wrap things up here, I would say. So one thing I want to note is, is in November 17th through 19th, we're doing Postman Galaxy event. So if you've done PostCon or our in-person event the last couple of years, um, or you did any of our uh, Postman Galaxy tour that was earlier this year that, that got interrupted by COVID, um, this is where you wanna be. So we're currently working with all of our partners. I know Rod, Rick and team's gonna be submitting talks and, and we'll be part of the conversation. And so definitely, um, we just got the date announced. Uh, you can head over uh, to Postman Galaxy uh, at the website, you can uh, sign up. To be notified be on the list you can also submit a cfp if you would like to speak i know we would love to have you guys there um and then you're welcome to go ahead and uh enter to win an amazon gift card so we got a little bit more involved survey for you you can go to bit.ly slash postman dash nimbella and and get and get access to that survey and you can be entered in to win a gift card so i'm going to go ahead and leave it up the next slide is is just for q a but you know, I think we kind of filled up our hour with the demos and a little bit of conversation with us. So I think I'm going to, um, and we answered a few of the questions um, in line. So I think we're just going to wrap it up there. And I uh, want to say thank you to everybody and for having us. And thanks, Roderick, for joining us. Um, we're going to be doing more storytelling around what's possible with Postman and Nimbella. So stay tuned. There's stay tuned on the blog. Stay tuned on the YouTube channel because we're going to do some more um live uh working with it but i would say watch the open source repositories because i know the the postman plugin and the open api plugin i've got a whole list of things i want to work with roderick on when it comes to evolving that and and helping move from helping better define that line from mock to deployment and so we're going to keep working on this so stay tuned feel free to ask us questions on twitter and we'll do our best to answer them and thanks roderick i appreciate you today having you Thank you for having me. And thanks for the entire Postman team that made this possible as well. Thanks for the attendees. All right. Thank you, everybody.